Okay, now we're going to turn to the OmniSense ultrasound bone sonometer and look at uh, some of the components and the features of it. So recall that the OmniSense ultrasound bone sonometer measures the speed of sound, also known as the SOS, through the bone. It consists of a main unit and two handheld probes. The larger probe measures the SOS through the distal one-third of the radius. That's the bone that sits between the elbow and the thumb side of the wrist. The smaller probe, which we won't be using today, measures the SOS through the proximal phalanx of the third or middle finger. The reason we won't be using this today is because it is a little bit more difficult to maneuver and the distal radius should give us all the information that we do need. So we use these results in conjunction with the clinical risk factors to aid in need for further assessment. In other words, taking into consideration the risk assessment from the guidelines and the results from the OmniSense ultrasound bone sonometer, we'll be able to recommend to our patient whether or not they should see their physician for further assessment. So first of all, what we want to do is ensure that all the components are accounted for that we'll need to run the test. So we have the sun sunlight OmniSense unit, we have a keyboard, we have a mouse, we have the printer, and we have all the connecting cables. And an adapter. The adapter will be used to connect the mouse into one receptacle the printer into the other receptacle, and then the main receptacle into the unit itself. We've already mentioned the two probes, which we do have. We have a foot pedal, and we have two power cables. One power cable is for the unit itself, the other power cable for the printer that we're using. We have a phantom, and this is an interesting device. As you can see, it's clear and it's for system quality verification. We'll talk more about the Phantom in just a moment. We also have limb positioning fixtures uh, to help put the arm at rest in the correct position. We have measuring gauges and a marking pencil because we are going to have to measure the length of the arm from the elbow to the tip of the finger. We have a bottle of ultrasound gel to help the probe glide smoothly along the skin. We have a user's manual, which of course is always handy. And finally, towelettes for cleaning. These need to be non-alcoholic, so anything that would be uh, appropriate for a baby's bottom, for instance, would be appropriate for cleaning the probes and for cleaning the skin. So something like a baby wipe, for instance. Now we're ready to set up the unit. So again, let's make sure all the contents are available. We want to position the unit in an ideal area where the space is away from heating and air conditioning because it can affect the results. Then we attach the keyboard and mouse to the unit. And you'll see that the attachment areas are all either at the bottom of the back of the unit or in the back of the unit itself. So we'll first attach the keyboard and mouse. We're going to take the end of the adapter and put it in the back of the unit in the receptacle marked KB forward slash mouse. Then we'll attach the power cable to the unit, attach the foot cable to the unit, a connection to it, and it's marked on the back of the unit that it should go in COM2. And then we'll take the, we'll screw it in. And there is a screwdriver supplied if you would like to screw it in a little more tightly. Now we're going to attach the probes to the unit. Here is the CM probe, and that's the larger of the two probes that we'll be using. Let's attach this to one of the ports here. Now, it doesn't matter which of these two ports we attach it to. The unit will recognize it. However, we always need to remember that this is the CM probe and that that is what we're looking for on screen when we're using it because it may say CM1 or CM2. So right now we're going to put it in the number two port and again we can screw in the 
attachment more securely. And then taking the CS probe and putting it into the other port. In this case, that port is the number one port. Of course, we have the power cable for the printer, which of course goes into the back of the printer. So now we want to attach the printer, and we need to do that with the USB attachment. One end that fits into the back of the printer. and the other is just a USB connection. And you'll see that there are two USB ports in the back of the unit, so we're going to use one of those. So there we have the attachments all set up.